Well, hello again. I have returned. Fuck, sorry, a mosquito just uh, flew into my eyes. So if it looks like I'm crying from time to time, uh, that's it dissolving in my eyes. So, and mosquitoes are just the worst. And I think if they went extinct, nobody would miss them and the food chain would just keep on churning. Like, like one of the worst species probably there is because they're so widespread and so annoying. Anyway. I uh, wanted to follow up on some stuff. It's, it's so funny. Maybe Google's always listening. But uh, after I recorded my video on uh, the principles of like the self-improvement principles, the triple I of uh, identification, implementation and iteration, um, I uh, started seeing some videos on my YouTube feed about uh, how um, Vaynerchuk, I don't know if it's Greg Vaynerchuk, but something like that, you know, that very big social media guy. Uh, is kind of like uh, overhyped and you know, some people call him a fraud. Oh, yeah, yeah, this guy, how he uh, uh, isn't all that he's cracked out to be because, um, you know, his company pays like bottom dollar in New York and they have this like super cult. It's like it was disgusting from what I've seen, like the video they put out together, how amazing it is to work in his company. And then, uh, you know, after, after you click that, now YouTube just like piles on the rest. So I started seeing these videos about... I like the counter examples to his uh, work ethic that, you know, you don't need to burn yourself out. That's mainly what people are saying that like he preaches, go, 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 give it everything you have. Don't like, don't even think about spending money on anything. Just keep working, keep chugging along. And after a certain amount of time, you are going to um, inevitably. So I think that's a part of his spiel. Inevitably, you're going to see uh, positive results. I would. I haven't read his book. I don't have interest in these kinds of things. I mean, to be honest, I'm the one who wants to sell these kinds of books. Yeah, I should be aware of, like, I guess my peers. But um, I am not a fan. I'm a, first of all, I'm going to start by saying that I'm really not a fan of these, like, super hype, energy building, go get them kind of um, uh, motivational speakers. But at the same time, the man is saying some very real things that I have learned personally, intimately in my life, sadly, later than I wanted to, later than I should have. But I have learned them and because I've uh, experienced them, uh, I can definitely say that if you are trying to like discredit this Vaynerchuk guy because you don't want to experience burnout from hard work, you're making the same mistake that I was making and you're in a trap of your own making of your brain's aversion and the desire to avoid extra work. And hopefully you'll be in my position and you'll realize it, hopefully sooner than later. But the worst case scenario is you're just going to keep chugging along saying, oh, these guys are just fucking assholes. They never say what the real secret sauce is. And in a way, I think that some of that is right. Like they definitely have some secret sauce to make in millions. Uh, but no, none of us really wants to understand that, that hard work is the secret sauce. Uh, it's, you know, when my, uh, I'll give you this example of like crude level, level mining. I bet you a bunch of those guys went in there, didn't really know if there was going to be something in it. They overheard, they thought. And after a while of hacking away at dirt and coming up with nothing but dirt, they stumbled onto some precious nuggets. Um, the moral of that uh, example is this blind pursuit of success. You, it wouldn't make much sense if someone says, here's a 100% chance of success right there. Go over there, do it, get it, and you're going to be, like, I guarantee you for 100% you're going to come up with something. Everybody will simply do that. But then you know what that would uh, mean? That there's not much left for anybody else. Everybody would be in that exact position. That place would be super saturated. And whatever treasure is there would either be, you would either be too late or it would be so diluted and distributed between people that you would end up basically in what is commonly known as a nine to five job. Nine to five jobs are created from these sorts of um, patterns where someone discovers a niche or an industry that is highly profitable, where people are willing to pay for a service that they provide 
they become initially extremely rich. In the beginning, they didn't really know what was going on. They just started doing something. Maybe they had a hunch, a vision, an insight. And later on, as they started growing bigger, they were guaranteeing people income. So they said, hey, look, come work for me. I'll guarantee you this much. And uh, in the beginning, a lot of those jobs are better paid than they are later. Of course, the need for efficiency just drives the prices down. It drives, increases the competition. So the demand goes up, uh, supply goes up. And um, well, before you know it, a lot of jobs become minimum wages and then sometimes they're just completely obsolete. Like back in the day, way back in the day, it was a real skill to um, be uh, 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 a scribe. Like only a few people could uh, write. Uh, they would be like dictated to write. Like the uh, nobility or just some affluent people would tell them what to write down and they would on parchment. So that was, I wouldn't know if, I wouldn't say it was a high paying job, but it was like a more of a, ex, ex, a high, higher expertise level job. And then later, who's going to pay you to write anything? You'll be lucky if anyone pays you to write anything. Trust me. I used to want to be a writer and then I was like looking around and I said, hey, look, no one reads. No one's going to pay me to write. And it's too much work to do good writing. So nowadays we make movies. Probably soon enough we'll just outsource there will be like movie crea- uh, editing softwares that'll pick up on these uh, clickbait patterns and they'll like do the jump cuts and everything else and you won't have to sit there manually slicing everything but for now that's a skill that you can exploit right and with youtube even nobody knew what was going to become the next big uh, next big thing in terms of the type of content that gets produced and now look at the thumbnails look at the um uh, the type of, types of work, uh, types of videos that are being made, they've figured out what makes money. But there are so many of these people now that making um, a good, like, high um, profit um, earnings on them is just becoming harder and harder by day. You have to sp- spend a lot in marketing. You have to spend a lot in uh, networking and so on and so on. So, you know. It is what it is. It's good because other opportunities open up, right? Like when something, when an area gets too saturated, you have, you inevitably have to move elsewhere. It like kind of naturally through osmosis pushes you into another direction. Like think about it. If you had a water full of sharks, they would just eat up all the fish. And then what happens? They can't just chill there. They're going to start fighting each other. And that's not pretty when sharks start feeding on each other. So... This Vaynerchuk dude, right? He's like, no, no, no. Wow, you gotta be. Yeah, yeah. He embodies this very high energy um, motivational speaker. And I think if it works for you, if you can get behind that, you should definitely take any means necessary to achieve your success. If listening to Vaynerchuk every day gets you amped up and gets you doing what you want to do that's what you're going to have to do now ideally you would want to kind of like move away think of him like a training wheels start with him get learn how to ride fast with training wheels and then take them off and you eventually have to start cutting your own path through this world otherwise you're never you're always going to trail behind Vaynerchuk and eventually Vaynerchuk's niche itself is going to dry up so that's a positive that I can say. And then as far as his message goes, absolutely you have to work hard. Think about it this way. I just gave you an example with sharks where like if there are too many of them, they're going to start eating each other. Now, what do you think is going to happen if you are going in, let's say, for a job interview and there are, you know, you're not alone. There's like 20 more guys there. You're putting in bare minimum effort. Let's say you're putting in some effort. Even by your own untested standards, you're, you know, always going out to chill. You stop working at 5 p.m. and then spend the rest of your day uh, watching movies being, I don't know, you know, distracted. Uh, That's a big key to what uh, I think he's implying here with hard work and not splurging. 
But you're gonna go in, gonna, you're gonna go into this interview. So then what? You think that you plus twenty other dudes there, or dudes, girls, whatever, that you your mediocre efforts are gonna cut it? It's simple competition, guys. There's just there's nothing like subversive. There's no global scheme. There's no Illuminati fucking it up. Yes, there is some nepotism. Yes, there is some um, like advantages. Yeah, being born with money is, makes it easier for you, but it's also a disadvantage because when you're born into money, you're like, um, okay, I'll just chill. To what? what? House is paid for. So that's a big chunk of uh, money I don't need to worry about every month. Um, there's, I know they have a bunch in the bank. And if I wanted to, I could just sell the house and uh, live, off, uh, live off rentals. I don't know if you want to be that low. But that's the easy way out when you're born into privilege. But if you're not, whatever the case is, you're going to have to compete. You're going to have to compete. The, the, the whole idea why a lot of this shit is hard is because of other people. It's because you have to compete for what you're getting. No one, it, it, like, this goes up to this like, liberal mentality that like, there's handouts. We like to think that like, our school and, uh, system and a lot of our media is like, usurped by like, borderline communist, fascist. It's so ironic because they claim to hate those guys. But their mentality is very much a handout post-communism. I mean, I post communist mentality that I was a part of. When you grew up in, um, I grew up in communist Georgia, man, we had like food stamps. You had to go down there. You had to wait for bread. You had to uh, get this. Yeah, people still had their stuff and there, there was like, not all by government standards shady ways, but we could still get things. We'd have like American like treats and like, brands and all these other things. But a general person's mentality is still that, like, what am I going to get from my government? Or, like, what am I going to get? No one's going to give you shit. You're going to have to go and, and go for it. You're going you're gonna to have to compete. Think about it. I want a job. You want a job. There's only one job. No, oh, well, let's make more jobs. Everybody can know. You can't. As soon as you say that, that means you, you're saying you could have done more. There, they, they, there's, if you're going to say that there is always another job, that means it's ext- an extremely inefficient system. You, they, they should, there should always be a limit on something, right? So uh, the natural driver to everything is efficiency. Like we're cutting out unnecessary jobs. We're cutting salaries. We're uh, cutting calories. Everything needs to get trimmed down so that you can allocate it to something new. There's a, these are real natural patterns. And um, yeah, if you, if you want to get somewhere, you don't want to be closing your laptop or like running away when the bell rings home and just thinking about which burrito you want to fucking order from Uber Eats today or like uh, what movie you're going to watch or what's new on Netflix. Like that's a distraction you're going to lose a precious amount of time that translates into um, efficiency, you're, you, into deep thinking. Like after a certain amount of time that you're kind of like thinking about shit and you're thinking about it some more and you're failing and failing, that should be driving you to try to solve the problem more. And you're going to hit this like flow level where you're just like, oh, now you get the subject intimately because in the beginning we really talk about subjects just like on the surface level, on the meaning of words level. Like if this means that, then this, then therefore that, and so I should be technically doing this. No, you need to have like an intimate understanding of the system of what you're going to be participating in, right? So having a, <clears throat> having a very dedicated mind is uh, essential. And I think someone said this, someone popular said this. I don't know who, but I... I'm taking credit. I don't give a fuck. I came up with this as well uh, that in the shower, ironically, and that is if you're not thinking about the thing you want to be doing in the shower, then it's not, you shouldn't be doing it. Meaning you have to be so passionate is that your waking hours are devoted to improving yourself in this scale or in this matter. Look, not everybody needs to do this. You, you, 
you can't have only sharks in the water. And you're not a shark just because you run a business, okay? And you're not a shark because you make it in, you're a famous YouTuber. But what I'm saying is that you, everybody can't have top paying salary. And you don't need to have a top paying salary as well, right? Like you can just go to, go, go to work, come home and just get that nice new burrito, get that new pizza, watch that show and go to sleep and just enjoy a stress-free life. It's okay. Just know what you want. But as far as this Vaynerchuk dude goes, I know I kind of sounded hypocritical right now and uh, that I'm, I was really amped up. But this is the intimate part that I, um, that I mentioned, that I was that lazy fog who thought I thought I could outsmart the system. I thought I was going to get things the easy way, the smart way. But there is no substitute for putting in work about a certain topic. Like, you can't freeze the water without subjecting it to some kind of change, right? Like you need to either put it in the freezer or something. You can't just say freeze. Like you can't, you can't just bake a cake by putting the ingredients together. You eventually have to put it in that um, Oh, then you have to wait for it and, and you have to keep repeating it and you have to keep doing it because in the beginning you're not going to make the best cake. If you think you made the best cake in the beginning, you're wrong. It's by definition wrong. And maybe you did. But how many one of you want to take a chance on that, that you're going to get the best thing from the beginning? This is what it always comes down to. You're taking chances on everything that you're going to like say and think. Oh, all you need is one chance, take it. That's yours. <sighs> so on the on the flip side though, I think that just simply following this guy along and um, doing what he did is the wrong way to go. As much as I agree with the mentality, I agree with following him because he did his thing. He sucked up a lot of money and energy in the space that he's operating. You don't want to compete with him unless, yeah, sure, you have some new spin on it and you want to take your chances there. But I don't think that's a message that you should be uh, taken away from these kinds of uh, motivational speakers. You should be thinking about how can you deploy your energies and time to achieve something that you think is your best chance at success. And I was really tempted right now to say, oh, but you can do it any way you want to, but no, you can't. There are some things you can't go without. And unfortunately, I think putting in long hours and putting in a lot of thought and a lot of subjecting yourself to a lot of failures is a, a step in the process you cannot hop over not even a hurdle it's like a fucking wall you have to scale the wall unless you want to defy the laws of gravity and physics you have to scale that wall you can scale it Whew. so um there you go i'm kind of lost in uh, what i was saying but i think that a lot of people want these shortcuts these books are bestsellers like seven uh habit uh yeah, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, uh, How I Wake Up in the Morning by Elon Musk, uh, How My Poop Looks Like, Bill Gates. And we, like, it's the biggest logical fallacy I've ever seen in my life. Oh, you want to be like Bill Gates? Just tell me what, oh, you want to be like, sorry, you want to be like Michael Jordan? Tell me what he ate. Oh, you want to be fast like Usain Bolt? What kind of smoothies does he drink? Oh, you want to be like uh, Conor McGregor? What gloves does he wear? Shut the f Go to the gym for uh, 12 hours, like three sessions of eight hours a day, and uh, then keep doing that for like years, and then maybe you'll uh, you'll understand. But you know how they say in that Rocky song, you know, there's no easy way out. You have to you have to do it. So the um, the problem is that we tend to get mad, right? A lot of those guys, they, they, they get mad when they hear this thing because it's not what they want to hear. They don't want to hear this 
you don't want to hear this that you're gonna have a shitload of like long-term effort um, squeezed out of you but think about it if you're pursuing something that's supposed to be really precious why is it supposed to be so easily attainable so if it's worth doing it's worth suffering for a little bit have a nice one don't think about it too much just go to work get to work